Hello and welcome to our report card for the TNT. If you haven't seen one of these before, basically what I do is go back and revisit a ball that's been out for a few months to check in, see how popular it's been, see if I got it right in the review, and report on how much we've used it and what it's best at. Also, since it is a report card, I will actually be giving out grades, or a rating rather, using the new Kool-Aid meter. The staffers always robe up and pass the cups out for every new release, but are they still drinking it a few months down the road? Before we get started, big shout out and thanks as always to Royal Crest Lanes. They're a big part of bringing these videos to you. All it takes is a text and we have everything we need. Also, my code ROSEDALL10 will get you 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick. And if you check the description, you'll find a bunch of helpful links and information, including our personal specs, a discount code for custom ball cups and spinners through Scarred Prints, even a discount code for a new affiliation with Free Spirits, which features non-alcoholic replacements for things like whiskey, tequila, and gin for those looking or needing to cut back on and or quit drinking. And finally, links to buy each of these balls at Bowler's Mart. I do receive a 5% commission on all sales through the links. The TNT features the E-Trax Plus solid cover, which is supposed to come at 2000 out of the box. The Pearl version was on the RSTX2 for reference, and the new Symmetric Torpex core, which takes heavy inspiration from the Orbital core in the Axiom line. Super low 247RG with a strong 052 differential in 15 pounds, so expectations were for this ball to be really rolly and stable, but still be somewhat medium strength and have a bit of shape due to the cleaner cover. And what we got was a freaking tank, and what I think might be the best two-hander ball ever made, the best reactive two-hander ball at least. For me, I did somewhat get what we were expecting on paper, uh, but I also took mine down to a thousand grit and then polished it with Storm Step 2 compound. With my heavier ball roll and softer speed, I usually can't throw much of anything with surface unless I'm on heavier and longer patterns. Plus, James and Angel generally prefer surface, so I thought it'd be a great opportunity to show a couple different surface preps off. Now, the issues with the Reactagloss box surface are known, but we had no reason to think that a sanded ball would share those issues. James attempted to throw his out of the box, and it was a disaster. Uh, however, with as heavy rolling and smooth as it is, we had trouble initially figuring out whether it was burning up or not hooking because those two things look incredibly similar. We went ahead and attempted to film to give it a little time to shine up or just give it a little more angle and oil and see if it improved, and it never did. It acted like it wanted to hook but just spun, and our conclusion was that some of the solid stuff is getting cross-contaminated somehow by rolling along production lines, tracks, belts, whatever, after a batch of reactive gloss balls has gone through. I have no idea how production works, so I could be completely off on that, but given how badly this ball acted for him out of the box, and given that the reaction characteristics mirrored those of the reactive gloss balls, namely not finishing down lane, not absorbing oil, and getting slick, cross-contamination theory seems plausible, especially given how it acted after a resurface. We went down to 1000 grit on Jayhawk Bowling Supplies Diamond Dust Pads and back up to 2000 grit to try it again, and the difference was shocking. It's still a very early, heavy rolling, smooth, chuggy ball that slows down significantly, but with the surface reset, it actually began to react down lane. We are both surprised at how much this ball hooks and kind of struggled to reconcile the reaction.
definitely the dominant attribute here. Now we can tell the cover is still medium strength, but the overall reaction is quite a bit stronger than it should be on paper, especially again given the reference point we have from the RSTX2. I think it unfortunately is faking a lot of people out and the confusion keeps it out of a lot of people's bags. Now on the surface it appears stronger than uh, something like a phase 2 because of how early it is, but when you actually get on volume the cover doesn't have the dig that the P2 cover does, so the TNT seems to both be ultra strong but also weakish and lazy at the same time. Now even past that I think people are misreading what's happening there too. They think rather than not being strong enough and not hooking that it's actually burning up so they think they need even more oil when the opposite is true. I think for best results it needs to be treated more like a step up from an IQ Tour but a slight step down from a P2 or like if the P2 is too much and too sharp the TNT should fit below it. It likes straighter angles the best, it's extremely controllable, and again, for two-handers on most short to medium patterns, it should absolutely wreck those. Now try to throw it on longer heavy and you're going to run into problems. For me, it's a 7. It's kind of a contradiction trying to throw it with shine. It wants to roll super early and really control the lane, but the cover still wants to be clean and shape, so it felt like it kind of fights itself shiny. It's better with surface on it, but at that point it's so early and strong that it puts it out of any kind of usability window for me. If I get far enough in to get it down the lane, then it doesn't want to make the corner. I do want to get another one though. I'm continuing to improve and it would give me a fantastic delta against the clone and tour dynamics. Plus, this should be like the ultimate lefty ball too. So it stays a 7 currently, but I'd expect that number to go up now that I understand the ball better. For James, I think it's also a 7. Now he has the speed and rev rate to make it work with surface, but again, it feels like the cover struggles a bit to keep up with what the core is doing, and that shrinks the usability window down quite a bit because while he does need strength and dig to get the ball moving, his game also relies heavily on having a decent amount of shape to help it finish down lane because of how clean his release is. You can see that while it's hooking enough and rolling strongly enough for him, he's still having to milk more shape out of it. I have several reviews for the TNT covering it from several different angles and of course the TNT Infuse just got announced which is a two parts pearl one part solid hybrid version, same cover formula, so a review on that will be coming down the pipeline at some point. Down in the description is a link to Bowler's Mart that will get a TNT ordered for you. Also of course don't forget my code ROSEDALL10 to get 10% off your order at checkout at Coolwick. Thanks for watching and may the strikes be with you.